Hello, welcome to my chronic fatigue recovery channel. Um, I've been living with um, idiopathic chronic fatigue for the last 10 years. Um, and in the last three or four months of this year, um, I quit my job at the end of last year and I've been able to focus on my own health. Um, I'm in a lucky position where over the years I've built up enough salary to be able to afford to be off work for a little bit to focus on my health. And I've not really had the opportunity to do that beforehand. Um, but I've learned quite a few things this year um, that I just want to let you know about because um, you might be in a similar boat and just being aware of some of these things you can start to tackle them. Um, so 10 years ago I'd moved from Leeds where I'm from down to London um, for a job in, in a marketing agency that was long hours, stressful job, uh, multitasking all the time so between I'd be working between 9am and 7 to 8pm on a regular basis. Um, there was a work hard, play hard culture so a lot of people would go out on a Thursday, go out till three or four in the morning, be back into work for nine, be hungover. But um, most people seemingly were able to do that, maybe because they were in the early 20s. But I think that was not a good thing for me. Um, I later found out about seven years later that I'm intolerant to gluten. Um, and so my hangovers were su substantially worse than everyone else's. But I didn't know that that was the case. There's no test for hangover severity. Um, I think because I was maybe going out on a weekend or maybe going out midweek, um, my sleep hygiene was all over the place. So I was working late. I couldn't um, relax. I needed to um, work living in a shared house where there's not much space in the kitchen. People are cooking at the same time. There's not much storage space. Um, things aren't as clean uh, as you would want them to be. It's hard to have a balanced diet all the time. I was drinking a full fat Coke probably five days a week during the week. Um, which gave me a bit of energy, um, but, that, but a combination of diet, sleep hygiene, poor, uh, poor sleep hygiene, um, and the stress of the job um, did result in insomnia. So I had that for at least three years. Um, sought some some um, support from that. So I got some CBT from a therapist. Um, the first therapist, I didn't really relate to her because she actually didn't have much experience in insomnia specifically. So I found another therapist and reached, research, researched it a little bit more to find a therapist who had experience of insomnia. That was all really good in terms of getting coping skills for um, insomnia and actually underlying that anxiety and some low self-esteem issues that had um, come about in the school life and, and really um, continued into my early 20s. Um, but, but still the, the, the fatigue remained and I still get an unrefreshed refresh sleep, so I had a sleep study and lots of other things. But basically, I've realised that my personality, I'm a bit of a perfectionist because um, that work ethic has been driven into me by my school, which was quite a competitive environment and then revalidated in, in successive jobs since then, particularly the marketing agency job, which was really kind of multiple clients, um, multiple um, uh, multitasking all the time, just really pushed to as far as you can go. And that was the norm. So the thought. I thought that was normal for me as well. So if I can't do it, what's wrong with me? And I guess I've started to rem uh, remunerate. <laughs> can't say that word over time. Um, so I think in hindsight, um, yeah, my personality, I need to be more compassionate with myself, you know, just getting something done to the level it needs to be at rather than getting it absolutely 100% is really important. Um, having that com compassion for yourself is, is important. Um, I got diagnosed with SIBO, so small intact, intestinal bacterial growth about four years ago. Um, that may be a result of the chronic stress that suppressed my immune system. And so the bacteria grew up. Who, who knows? No idea. But once you're diagnosed with that, which you can't be diagnosed on the NHS, you need to do a hydrogen methane breath test, which you have to do privately, which is really expensive. But if you get that done, um, there's essentially a course of antibiotics and then probiotics beyond that and that should clear it and you can have another breast, breast test to make sure that that is gone. Um, I went through at least three rounds of that before it had gone and it can reoccur. Um, so I think it's around considering your diet longer term um, to, re to reduce or minimise the chance of SIBO uh, reappearing. SIBO causes is basically similar um, symptoms to IBS, can cause fatigue on its own, etc, etc. Um, there's just things along the way. So a GP suggested doing FODMAP, but never really suggested being um, seeing a dietitian. Never referred me on to dietitian at any point. Um, my diet hasn't been awful, but it could be better in hindsight. Um, 
so actually rather than format that is really hard you know you really got to cut out loads of stuff and reintroduce them one at a time it's quite hard um if a gp suggests that make them refer you to a dietitian because without it you're just not going to be able to do it on your own what's easy to do the two main biggest intolerances that can cause fatigue on their own are gluten and dairy so take out gluten for about four weeks so breads pizzas etc um cereals and just see how you are see if you feel better take out beer as well or drink gluten-free beer um and then if that doesn't work then take out dairy do the same for four weeks and that might actually make a big difference on its own uh, rather than going straight into fodmap which is really difficult um what i found is because there's a combination of things with diet with sleep hygiene with gluten intolerance with more latterly alcohol intolerance um if you remove one you've still got the symptoms it's not easy to say to see the impact of getting rid of one problem with all the others there and you don't really know what others are there without kind of looking at everything collectively and tackling one at a time um so that that's probably why i found it really difficult to find out what what the hell's wrong with me um so where have we got to um yeah so i've really just tried to this year just cut down on my alcohol so um rather than use it as a relaxant um i might have it once or twice a week but maybe one or two drinks i've really toned down my social activities as well um, that's easy to do in January of the year because a lot of people are doing that. So I would suggest doing something similar uh, rather than say in, in October or November when everyone's going out and, and it's hard to cut down really unless you don't want to see your friends, which is how it appeared to me. Um, I think relaxing, understanding what, what relaxing means. So relaxing doesn't necessarily mean going out or watching TV. Um, because I found if I read for even a short amount of time, five, ten minutes, and my head hurts, the tension headaches that I get just get stronger. Even if I watch TV, I've got to be quite mindful of what I'm watching. So sometimes what I've realised is sometimes I just need to do nothing. So be be mindful of the situation. So lie on my bed, think about the, the sights, sounds, smells, things that I'm touching. Be mindful. Um, be, do some breathing exercises. Um, that I found these quite helpful. I went to a breathing class at a yoga studio, studio recently and that was really, really helpful. Um, so really understanding what relaxation means. And I think actually together, a combination of diet, a reduction in alcohol, um, only have one or two coffees in the morning now, I'm not particularly strong. Um, I'm not in a stressful job anymore. Um, and I think all of that together is really, really helping. So I just thought it'd be useful to tell you where I'm up to um, I've learned a huge amount yeah, in the last three months because I've focused on my health, um, so hopefully you find it helpful too.